Welcome to a TUSD Robotics production. In this video, you're going to learn how to use constraints in Onshape to make CAD VEX IQ robots. By the end of the lesson, you will make an assembly that looks like this, that has a 1x10 beam with a sprocket gear spinning on a drive shaft. All right, let's get started. In this lesson, you will be using a file called VEX IQ Constraints Lesson. This is a document that I have shared with you. You will see that it's in your Shared With Me folder. If I go to my Onshape menu, you might, you might see a lot of other files that you've created or worked on. But if I go to the Shared With Me, you should see the one file that I shared with you that's called the VEX IQ Constraints Lesson. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Now, when you get a view only copy, and you can see that it says view only in the top left corner, this means that I cannot make any edits. I might have a toolbar that looks like this. This means that it is in the view only type of setting. In order to make this editable, you're going to need to make a copy. So I am going to go over to my three bar document menu. I'm going to click on that and copy the workspace. And you can go ahead and name this. Um, you can keep the name that it has here, but I'm just going to put Vex IQ Constraints Lesson, My Copy. Okay, now when I go to my menu, you will see that the My Copy is in my workspace. Okay, so I'm going to go into this My Copy document and notice that menu bar is off the bottom. So this is an editable copy. You can also tell because there's a plus sign right here. And this allows you to make new part files, new assembly files, or even import part files if you have your own. But let me talk a little bit about what's in this document. First of all, you will see that there's a part studio, and this part studio is blank, and we're going to keep it blank because we're not designing any parts. You will see that there is a part file called a rubber shaft collar. This is the black uh, piece right here. You will see that there is a 32 tooth sprocket gear. It looks like this. This sprocket gear is often used for like bike chain or track. You will see that there is a 5x pitch shaft. This is the metal drive shaft that will go through the gears and the wheels and the motors to make them turn. And then you will see there is a 1x10 beam. And this beam uh, looks like this. It is one hole wide and 10 holes long. And that's how we always measure our beams in VEX IQ is by the number of holes. Now, if I click on the folder CAD imports, it's going to show you that I have created another folder that contains all these part files. Now, I'm not sure why when you open these, it says there's an update needed, but you can go ahead and ignore that because it's going to work just fine. I'm going to click back on the folder VEX IQ parts. Oh, that's already open. CAD imports. And you'll see that there are three different files that I have here, a folder of parts, a folder of imports, which actually are the same types of files, and then a finished assembly. Now this finished assembly is the one I put together that you're going to try to copy. So it gives you an example of what it looks like. You can see that we have our 1x10 beam and going through a hole of that beam we have the drive shaft and going through the hole of the uh, sprocket gear you also have the drive shaft going through there and then it's all attached on with this rubber shaft collar. So I'm going to show you how to make this. So if you want to come back and look, I have the assembly here for you, but you're going to create your own new blank assembly file. To do this, you're going to click on this plus button and, cl and then click create assembly. So now you will see that a new assembly just opened. It's called assembly two, and we're going to go ahead and start inserting these parts into this assembly file. We do this by clicking on the insert menu in the top left corner. And when I click on that, you can see all the parts that I imported. So I'm going to start by importing the one by 10 beam. I'm going to click on it. I can click on the space where I want it and then the check mark to accept. Perfect. I can go ahead and rotate this and look at it if I want. You're going to remember your, this is a computer lesson, so you're using a mouse. To zoom in, you're going to scroll in and scroll out. To make it move all together like this and rotate the, the 3D view cube is a left click that you hold down. 
and then my right click, I can select the piece and I can rotate it in one direction at a time using those arrows and those little dots. Remember, this is a computer lesson, so you're using a mouse. All right, let's insert the next part. I'm going to insert the pitch shaft. So I'm going to click on it, click on where I want it in the workspace, and check mark to accept. Okay, so if I want to move this by itself, I got to select it first, and then I can move it because I've only selected one part and I'm using my right click to move it. I'm going to click the white space to deselect. All right, so now what I need to do is we're going to use a constraint. So I can put the axle or the drive shaft into one of these holes. Now notice when I zoom in, the hole has uh, the top is highlighted, now the bottom is highlighted, now the whole center is highlighted. So there are many different points that you can use to constrain parts. And when I say constrain, it means how you glue the pieces together. Now up here you can see there are a lot of different constraint options. We will only be using two. The first one is called the fastened mate, and the fastened mate actually glues it together so they stick. So we will be using this one the most. We will also be using one that is directly to the right of the fastened mate called the revolute mate. The revolute mate allows the drive shaft or the axle to spin inside of its mate. So this would be the one we will use to spin the axle inside of the wheel. So we're going to start with the revolute mate and insert this axle into the hole. So I'm going to click on this revolute mate, which is a circle that has two directions spinning on it. I'm going to click on it, and now I need to select the two parts that I'm going to mate together. The first one is going to be this center piece of the top of the axle. I'm going to click on that there, and you can see that it lists that it's one of my mate connectors has been selected. Now I'm going to go to the hole, and I've got to find the center of that hole right there. So I'm going to click on it once I see that kind of bullseye look. I'm going to click on that. Now I have two mates selected, and I can go ahead and click the green check mark. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom out here. Now, one thing you might get confused on is if, you are too, if your assembly is too far off the screen, just make sure you move your mouse and then zoom in and it will move to the center of the screen. So wherever you point your mouse is where it zooms in. So I'm going to point my mouse right on the center of the beam here and that's where it zooms in. All right, now because we are in the using the computer program, I can test this mate with this animate uh, button right here. Oh, whoops, you'll see it, it always opens this extra mate. I'm going to get rid of that one. Okay, so here are my list of mates along the left side. I also have my list of parts, and you can see it highlights as it goes over it. This one is highlighted is the axle, and I can actually rename that by right-clicking and then going down to then clicking on properties, and I can rename it. So this is the drive shaft. Now you don't need to do this, uh, but it might help you knowing which part is which. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click in properties, and I'm gonna name this one, this is the one by 10 beam. It doesn't come in with the name, it just comes in with the part number. So Now I can see that there. Now sometimes there seems to be some extra mates that appear. You can simply right click and delete them if there's too many, and you're gonna end up doing that over and over again when you make mistakes. But if I wanna open it back up and edit it, I can see I can test this mate and push play, and I can see I use the right mate. It's spinning in its hole. So I actually need this axle to be pushed through this hole a little bit more, keeping the same mate. And so I'm going to right click and edit this and open it up. And you can do this the first time before you close it out, but I'm going to offset 
this. Now we only have one direction we can offset, which is going to be around the Z axis. And I'm gonna offset it about one inch and look, see what happens. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna hit check to accept. And you notice now that it moves it through one inch. So it keeps the mate, but it offsets it by one inch. So it slid it through the hole. That looks perfect. Okay, next I'm going to insert my next part, which is going to be the gear. And so I'm gonna go to the insert button and then go to the sprocket gear, click on it. I'm gonna click in my workspace to drop it off and then check to approve and select. Okay, so now you can see it's kind of actually sitting on top and not the right spot. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna select this gear to move it away just the gear. So I'm gonna click it with the right click and just move it away. Now I click in the white space to deselect. All right, now when I left click and rotate it around, I can see what I'm working with. Now this time we're gonna use the fastened mate because I wanna glue this gear, this square hole in the middle of the gear to this square axle. All right, so I'm gonna use the fastener mate now I gotta select my two mates. First I'm gonna select, and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, I'm gonna select this square hole. And you kinda have to move your mouse around to get it to work. So let's see if I can, I don't want that. I'm gonna move it a little bit more. I saw it there in a minute ago. There we go, did you see that square? I'm kind of gonna hover around, that looks pretty good. There we go. I have the entire square selected with that middle point. I'm gonna click to select it, and you'll see it's added to one of my mates. I'm gonna zoom out. Now I'm gonna zoom in on the axle. Now I'm gonna try and find a similar pattern with that square and the four corners by just kind of hovering over. See, I got a line there, a line there. Let's see if I can get that. Well, let's try it. Let's just see if this works with this center piece because we had a center point on our other gear. So we're gonna click it. A lot of this is trial and error. It looks pretty good. So let me go ahead and check mark it to accept and move out. Let's see what it looks like. Let me zoom in the right way. Remember, move your mouse to where you want it so you can zoom in. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, there are some adjustments we can make. Let me zoom out a little bit. There are some adjustments we need to make, um, which would be, I'd like this gear to be pushed down closer to the beam. So we're gonna use the offset again. So I am going to go ahead and notice that this extra fastened comes up. I'm gonna close this out because I don't need that one. This is the fastened we just did. So I'm gonna right click and edit, and I'm gonna offset this one. I'm gonna do this one a half inch. Now we have three axes we can use, and a lot of this is trial and error. So you might try it, it doesn't work, and then you close it out, um, or you can delete it. But remember, this was our ax X axes that we used for the axle, so I'm gonna assume, uh, I'm sorry, Z. I'm gonna assume that it's our Z. Let me go ahead and do 0.5 inches. Oops, it went the wrong way. So I'm gonna go negative 0.5 inches and see what that does. All right, that looks pretty good. I wanna go a little closer, so I'm gonna edit that to 0.75. That looks better. Okay, so that looks good, and I have moved that gear down the x-axis, 0.75 inches in the negative direction. I'm gonna hit check mark to accept. All right, we are almost done. We just have one more part to put on, which is the rubber shaft collar. So I'm going to go back to my insert menu, I'm going to insert the rubber shaft collar. I'm gonna click in the white space where I want it and then green check mark to accept. I'm gonna rotate this around a little bit so I can see the two pieces I want to connect, which is this center hole and this center on the axle. Okay, so let me zoom in a little bit. Let me go to the fastener mate. Let me pick this top hole of the rubber shaft collar. Again, I'm just moving my mouse around to try and find that nice center piece. Uh, you can always try, and if it doesn't work, just delete it and try it again. Let's see, I don't like all that's what's selected. Oh, look at that, we got top, middle, and bottom. Um, I'm gonna select the 
middle one right there. But I notice that there's a center point. And then I come over here and I look at the shaft, drive shaft metal B or metal bar. I'm going to click on the center point there and check mark to accept. All right, notice because I clicked on that middle point that it goes to the middle of the rubber shaft collar instead of all the way to the end. So, but this is perfectly fine. There are a couple adjustments we can make. Again, this opened a fastener three window. I don't want a fastener three, so I'm gonna get rid of that. This fastener two is what we just did. So I'm gonna right click and edit to open the property window. I'm gonna check the offset and I'm gonna bring that down the Z axis about, let's go, we did 0.75 for the gear, so let's do point, uh, let's do 0 0.6 for the shaft collar and see what that looks like. Well, that looks perfect. Might be a little bit too far, but it looks pretty much perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can see. All right, we've got our gear on the drive shaft. We've got our rubber shaft collar on. We got our sp sprocket gear on. Now, if you are on a computer, you can test to animate this. I'm gonna go to the Revolut Mate. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go all the way down to animate to see if it works by hitting play. And it sure does. All right, don't feel bad if this is hard. Just go ahead and try and if it doesn't work, delete and try again. This is all trial and error. I've done this many times, so I'm gonna go a lot faster. Just hit pause in the video and keep trying. Remember, this is a program that professionals use in the field, and so you are getting a huge head start on your STEM career. All right, good luck.